Not a Monster, a Pale Ring Short Story, written by Brian McKee. I am not a monster. What are you, then? Alive, despite the best efforts of you and yours. I stared at the red-scaled creature before me, narrow-eyed and skeptical. She was at most four feet tall, her body slender but rippling with tightly packed muscle. She wore little in the way of clothing, only a scant bundle of ragged leather around her chest and waist, no doubt to show off the many scars she bore. A long tail lashed slowly through the blades of grass behind her. Her slitted yellow eyes glared up at me, while her right hand tightly clenched the shaft of her war scythe in the grass beside her. Her face was steel, cold, unbending, and utterly unreadable. Still, I read the bluff for what it was. I took a step toward her, my hand tightening around the hilt of my broadsword. You butchered an entire family of farmers in their own home, I barked at her, pointing my sword at her throat. Yet you would have me believe you are not a monster? The kobold did not flinch. Her scaly lips quirked up into an amused smile, as if she were hearing the lies of a child with an overactive imagination. The look put an uncomfortable pit in my stomach. Kithail. I blinked. The foreign word meant nothing to me. I tilted my head. My name, she clarified. It is Kithail. I trust your ears are good enough that I need not repeat myself. I frowned at her. Kithail, huh? The name was guttural and harsh but carried with it a sort of brutal elegance. It seemed fitting for one of her kind. Her smile morphed into a frown, the amusement dissipating. Is it not customary of your kind to reciprocate when someone offers you their name, human? I pursed my lips. Lawrence, I finally answered, keeping my sword aimed at her. Cathale's lips twisted in on themselves. Lawrence, she repeated in a low hiss, rolling the syllables around like a sweet treat. She shrugged as if dismissing a bad joke, then looked back up at me. There, now we are introduced. What does that matter? Cathale just smirked again. She drew the fingertips of her free hand through the grass by her thigh, drawing attention to the blackened claws that tipped them. Monsters do not typically have names, she said as if she were lecturing a child. And monsters do not speak. Monsters rend and tear without a second thought. They butcher, maim, and slaughter and devour, their actions devoid of any reason save for their own barbaric bloodlust. Her eyes flickered at me, and I swore for a moment they seemed to glow. And they respond poorly to being threatened. A cool breeze washed over the hill sending a chill creeping down my spine. I kept my sword leveled at the kobold, mulling over her words, then shook my head. You murdered an entire family. Monster or no, you need to be put down. Murder. Such a presumptuous accusation. Cathale spat, sitting upright. I suppose I ought to expect no better from your kind, however. You humans are ever wont to leap to the first excuse that conveniences your biases. The family was found dead, and you were seen fleeing their cottage, 
I countered. You killed them! Yes, Cathale replied with such casual ease that it made my blood boil. How dare she to so casually admit her crimes as if it were of no more significance than eating the last slice of bread in an old basket. She tilted her head at me. I assume context matters to your people. I doubt you would have built up a <laughs> such grand civilization otherwise. The sarcasm dripping from her voice was palpable and infuriating. What context do I need? I demanded, taking another step forward. Cathal grinned wider. <laughs> the fact that you felt the need to ask that question is all the answer you need. I paused, my frown deepening. Cathal slowly stood, her war scythe held casually at her side. She strode slowly but confidently past me, staring out across the fields beyond. I watched her, tense, ready to plunge my blade into her back at the earliest opportunity. Her tail swished as she took it all in. Rolling grasslands sprawled out before us for miles and miles, and for a moment she appeared dreadfully small when compared to it. She stretched her spine and raised her hand, but not to relieve tension. It appeared almost as if she were trying to touch the pale ring up in the sky. She then looked back at me, her expression impossible to read. Tell me, surfacer, what do you know of kobolds? Confusion welled up inside of me, but I played along with the question for now. Your kind are the enemies of all mankind, I said slowly, recalling all the lessons I'd been taught ever since I was just a little boy. We've been at war with your hordes off and on for centuries. You live in massive underground communities, and you launch sorties to the surface to tear apart small villages. You slaughter indiscriminately and steal anything of value before returning to your underground burrows to breed and eat and plan your next move. Cathale threw her head back and laughed. I took a step back, growing increasingly uneasy. When she opened her eyes again, there was a strange spark in them. I could not tell if it was more amusement or murderous fury. Perhaps it was both. <laughs> I, you are at war. And it is a common tactic in war to demonize the enemy, is it not? What is the word you use for it? She tapped her chin for a moment, humming an exaggerated thought. Then she snapped her fingers. Her claws clacked like bone rather than flesh, and spun to face me directly. Ah, yes. Propaganda. Force-fed to you as a babe like milk from your mother's fleshy teat. And like any dull-witted babe, you drank it all up without a second thought. Perhaps, I conceded coldly. But the truth before me speaks far louder than the lessons I was taught. Cathale lifted her arms as if an invitation... Well, then tell me, why haven't you tried to kill me yet? Another chill wind. I furrowed my brow in agitation and gripped my sword in both hands. Claimed you were no monster. I gave you the chance to explain yourself. Oh, well, you've hardly succeeded, Cathal bit back. From the moment we began talking, nearly every word you've spoken has been an accusation, a dismissal, or an insult. Ah, 
I grow weary of this, I finally shouted, tensing to lunge. If you have a point, get to it. Kithel's expression darkened. Her tail lashed at the grass behind her again, her eyes narrowing with contempt. But she held her head high, and though she stood head and shoulders shorter than I, I knew she was looking down on me. I had hoped to let you find the right questions yourself, but so be it. Yes, I killed that family. I butchered every last one of them. I split their flesh and spilled their blood with blade, claw, and fang. She narrowed her eyes into slits, and her lips peeled back to show off her yellowing teeth, large and sharp enough to crunch through armor. I slaughtered them, because they struck first. And why shouldn't they? I demanded. After everything your kind has done. Kithale threw her arms wide. My kind... My kind! Do you see my kind here, human? Do you see a horde with me? She suddenly shouted, and in that moment her composure faltered, replaced with indignant rage. What warband marches at my side? What dragon darkens your skies to guide my footfalls? Look around you, you damnable fool! What do you see? What is missing? I paused, the realization kicking in. Kobolds were known for their powerful bonds of community. They were often likened to insect hives or animal packs, every member doing their part, working in tandem to keep their burrows running, and all serving their draconic master with unflinching loyalty. Common understanding told us that where one kobold roamed, there would be many more. Kithail was here alone. She had been inhabiting the hills around the village for weeks, and thus far, to my knowledge, she was the only one to be seen. She could have been a scout then, but something about that rang untrue. Kithail lowered her arms. You said a moment ago... That we live in hordes. Well, I have no horde, human, she finally said. I am an exile, and I approached that village because I needed help. I was starving, and I was lost. I do not hail from this blinding, blazing surface world. I don't know where I am, and I know not where to go. I sought your kind for aid. I chose to give your people a chance to prove their worth. I have warred with you for so long, I never knew if you had a shred of compassion in you. Do you expect me to believe that? I asked, although I am ashamed to admit there was little conviction in my voice. I expect you to believe the truth, Cathale replied plainly. I came to them for help. I knocked on their door, and they answered with knives and pitchforks and calls for my head. I defended myself. Nothing more. Slowly, I began to lower my sword. You fled the scene the moment the deed was done, I pointed out. Kithail grunted. <laughs> Did you expect me to remain? Plead my case to the panicky masses? The first people to lay eyes on me tried to kill me. What would everyone else do if they came upon the scene to find me covered in the viscera of their neighbors? Do you honestly believe they would call on the town judge and put the monster on trial? I suppose not, I admitted slowly, my sword lowering to my side. Cathal nodded, satisfied that I finally acknowledged her point. 
I am not a coward, Lawrence, but I am no fool either. I know my limits. Though they fight with neither grace or skill, by sheer numbers would they have overwhelmed me. And my life is not theirs for the taking. Nor is it yours. I winced. That was the whole reason I had come up here. When I'd passed through the village, the populace had practically clamored at me to scour the hills for the beast that butchered one of their families and put it to justice. And I had given my word. And my word was my bond. So, what shall you do? Cathale finally asked. You have lent me your ear, more than I can say for any other human I've had the displeasure of meeting, and judging by your lowered guard, your mind believes what your ears have heard. I am no monster. I'm simply alive, and they are not. Is that crime enough for you to sentence me to death? I grit my teeth my eyes drifting past the proudly standing kobold. The village was just barely visible in the distance, little more than a spot of gray and brown against the distant hills. The people were afraid, wondering if they were safe in their own homes. Self-defense or not, Cathale had hurt them, but it wasn't a crime to kill in self-defense. And if this kobold spoke true, which my gut told me she was, then she was an exile. She had no horde to back her up. I looked at her again. She was as unreadable as ever, eyes cold, lips pursed, tail swishing in anticipation. I again noticed her muscles, her many, many scars, and the ease with which she held her weapon. If we were to come to blows, there was a very real chance that she would tear me apart. Skilled as I was, I was but one man. Unskilled as the farmers were, they were many, and she had slaughtered an entire family of them. Still, I couldn't just leave her to her own devices. I took a breath. Grab your things and take your leave of this place. Never return. I will tell the villagers I have dealt with you, and I'll not have you making a liar out of me. If you ever show your face in this land again, your life will be forfeit. Kithael smirked at me. She almost looked amused again. (laughs) Exile. Fitting that my sentence be doubled, she muttered. With a graceful spin, her war scythe was returned to its place on her back. But perhaps there is something of value to be found in your kind, however small it may be. I sheathed my sword. Look harder. You may be surprised by how much you find. Cathale laughed at me. A cold, mirthless sound. She turned to walk away. You first, she said, and she did not look back. <laughs>